Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cheapo Multimeter Review. Today in the hot seat, we've got the Anang H01. A cheapy multimeter from China that goes for around 10, 12 dollars US. Around 15, 16 Canadian. First thing you notice about this little Anang is the fact that it is quite colorful. Yeah, we're not looking at a rainbow, folks. There's no pot of gold under this multimeter. In terms of the actual design itself, it has a pretty decent feel. It's slender in the hand. The rubber that they're using for the holster, it's not that bad. Now, some people will probably say that this has that and it definitely does. There's something assembly line-ish that just resonates with this meter in terms of the actual smell. It didn't come in a box, it came in a uh, plastic bag, uh, sealed, brand new. But yeah, if you could do the scratch and sniff, you would definitely find that it has a bit of a plasticky odor. And I'm sure that'll dissipate over time, but uh, just food for thought. The standing bail, as you can tell, it's floppity flop. Now what will go in there if you give it a good squeeze. And it is, as you can also see, a low profile meter. By low profile, I mean it doesn't really take up a whole lot of space on your work desk. As with most cheapo multimeters, it does ship with these crappy set of leads. And we'll try a continuity test shortly, but yeah, they have that very plasticky hard feel to them. They do have a cat rating on them, a cat three rating, 1000 volts. And that's <laughs> definitely something I wouldn't try with these leads. Very plasticky. Um, there's some shrouding on the end here, on the input side, but once again, it just reeks of crap. So yeah. I have seen some half decent leads coming out of China with the cheap multimeters as of late, but unfortunately with the Anning H01, one of them. Now this is a 4,000 count auto ranging multimeter. We'll go through the selections quickly. As you can see, we're starting off with the volts, ACDC, followed by resistance. This does up to a whopping 40 ohms, so not very high in terms of the actual resistance. In fact, that's one of my pet peeves with this particular multimeter is the fact that in terms of actual specifications, it kind of sucks. Taking up to the continuity diode test. Now, we will delve into this in a little bit more detail. This is the El Cheapo piece of paper slash manual that comes with the meter. And in the specifications, it does say that the open circuit diode testing uh, forward voltage is approximately 1.5 volts. This is incorrect, and we'll measure that uh, forward voltage shortly, but it actually does a little bit better than that. Uh, speaking of the manual, it is probably something quite generic. Yes, they do actually have a picture of the Anning on the manual itself. But in terms of specs, um, they seem to be way off. So I don't know if this was some sort of a misprint, what have you, but it really doesn't seem to be specifically related to this particular multimeter. In fact, there's not even a capacitance uh, range on this spec sheet. And the Anning H01 does do capacitance. Uh, so yeah, manual is actually a piece of junk. Okay, getting back to the meter itself. Going up a notch, we have the capacitance range, and this is this is where it really bites the dust. Because if you remember my last review, we looked at the WinApex ET8101. That thing had a massive, massive range. Um, it actually was able to successfully test a 47 millifarad capacitor. That's 47,000 microfarad. The Anning H01, on the other hand, only goes up to. Are you ready for this? 400 microfarad. 400 microfarad. I mean, what? Utter crap. So yeah, if you do any sort of capacitance testing, definitely you wanna go forego this meter. Moving up, we have the duty cycle. And then of course the ever so gimmicky NCV. 
non-contact voltage range. You're seeing this more and more on multimeters. I still think it's rather a gimmick, but yeah, we're seeing it everywhere now. As well, in terms of current, we have microamps, milliamps, and amps, AC, DC. Now, the one nice thing about the meter is you do have that dual off on the rotary. So as you can see, if you're testing out current, God forbid with this meter, it's simple on off. Same thing if you're on the voltage side, on off. So it's nice having that dual off switch. And speaking of the rotary switch itself, has a very, I'll just call it a really lousy feel. I mean, it's hard to navigate because it has this extreme slender plasticky feeling to it. And it is a super, super mushy, aggravating. God, I hate this rotary switch. Yeah, it's, it's really quite uh, crap, but uh, yeah. We have the infamous CE rating here. What does it mean in terms of this multimeter safety? Well, probably not a heck of a lot. So you can see on the 10 amperage range, there is no fuse. We do have some sort of protection on the milliamp. According to this, it says 400 milliamps. And we'll take a look once again at the safety input when we tear this puppy apart. So what we're gonna do first of all is take some comparison test between this and another El Cheapo multimeter and we'll put it through the rings and then we'll tear it apart and take a look at what's inside. Stay tuned. Now is it just me or the colors on this meter like just way too funky? Take a quick look at the display itself and as you can see if you look at it head-on it's got a rather measly meek kind of a look to it if it is at an angle like so definitely much more readable much more uh, contrast uh, a better looking display as well you do have a light on the meter even though it's not indicated anywhere and to turn that light on you simply hold down the hold button and voila now the light does turn off after around 25 30 seconds there is no way to keep it on so yeah what can I say? Okay, the first test today for the Anang H01 will be the diode. Now, will it be able to successfully light up and indicate a forward voltage for these five LEDs in front of me? We will soon find out. Here we go, starting with the red LED. Nada. Let's try reversing the leads. There we go. And we do have the forward voltage drop of 1.759 volts. Let's go to Mr. Yellow. 1.8 volts. We do have light going to the green led and we do have the indicator of 1.8 being the voltage drop but and believe me i am looking and it is not lighting up this green led going to the white led and it is not lighting up and there is no indicator on the meter itself finally will it illuminate the blue led and the answer is no and once again there is no indicator on the meter in terms of a forward voltage drop. So three out of five, I guess it's okay. It is a cheap old multimeter. Okay, looking now at the ET8101, it is reading the diode voltage coming out of the Anning H01. As you can see, we have 2.2 volts. So that is better than the indicated 1.5 in the instruction manual. Now we're in continuity mode and I'm using the default leads. Here we go. Well, you know what? Surprisingly, it's not half bad. I do have to apply some pressure, but it's, it's decent. Okay, trying the same continuity test, but this time with a different set of leads. Once again, a cheap but good set of test leads. Here we go. So that's pretty well spot on perfect. There's no delay. It's latched, it's a little on the low side. It must have a um, small piezo or speaker inside the multimeter, but I'm really not applying any pressure at all and it's basically getting every single strike. I've got the Fluke demo board out and I will try a quick capacitance test. This is a 3.3 microfarad, 10%. 
and there we are 2.9 now we're in resistance mode this is a 22 mega ohm resistor and 22.65 and actually that was relatively fast try that one more time yeah that's pretty fast so uh in terms of the auto ranging it's very fast and uh doesn't take any time to settle good stuff And just for a little sojourn down memory, memory lane for all of my Canadian viewers, here is a Wellwin 30 ohm resistor. And you know what? 1% tolerance. Let's just try it out for the old time's sake. And there we are, spot on, 30 ohms. Okay, time for a quick voltage comparison between two relatively cheap multimeters. And we're gonna start taking it up a notch. Here we go. So sitting at 4.7 volts according to the power supply, 4.7, 4.69, 4.5, 4.6. Let's go a little bit higher. Sitting at 9.5 volts. 9.57 for the inning, 9.53 for the win apex. Up, up and away we go. 16.3 volts, 16.3 for the inning, 16.2. Some flutter going on, and for the ET80 101, 16.2 as well. So pretty well neck and neck, going up to 24.6 volts, 24.6 for the win apx, 24.7 for the inning. Higher, higher, here we go. We're gonna max it out now at 31.4 volts, 31.45 right on for the Win APX, 31.57 for the Anning H01s. The Anning reads just a little bit on the high side, but generally speaking, they were pretty well neck in neck. In terms of uh, settling on the voltage itself, let's just wave it around and settle back on the high side. Let's see who settles first, 31. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, probably just an edge goes to the Win APX in terms of actually setting on the voltage itself. Okay, we've got the Anning H01 in the non-contact voltage mode. There is no flashing lights or sort of nice visual indicator. You do have the EF on the display itself. What you do is you put up to your high voltage supply and As with a lot of the cheap multimeters, it's the same thing. Now, in terms of sensitivity, this one doesn't seem to be as sensitive as some of them. Yeah, so I've got it right up against the power bar, and I'm only getting one to two bars. So, kind of lousy in terms of non-contact voltage detection. We're in the AC mode, testing the... And 121.0 volts. Now I have it in frequency mode and I don't know what the heck is going on, but it's certainly not giving us a uh, 60 hertz like we should be seeing. Just to double check, I've taken up the one apex and there we are, 60 hertz. And uh, duty cycle, 50%, 49.8%, and 120 volts AC. So once again, I did plug the NA H01 back, and in terms of the uh, frequency, we are just all over the place. So the frequency function is totally out of whack. <laughs> okay, just before we take this baby apart, here is the plastic boot. Um, very cheap feeling rubber. Some of them actually have a, you know, okay quality, the cheaper multimeters. But in this one, it just kind of sucks. And for the multimeter itself, we do have one screw to take off the battery housing. And as you can see, it is nice and threaded. Takes two AAA batteries. Okay, so we have the back cover off and as you can see, no shielding and no surprise. Now let's take a look at the actual PCB itself. So here are the input jacks. Now they are, as you can tell, 
not in there very well. Um, the housing itself is loose. They are split. Split for me is not a big deal, but the fact that they're just, you know, extremely loose and uh, a so-so soldering job doesn't give me a whole lot of uh, good things to say. Very tiny current shunt. We have uh, one PTC. And here on the milliamp range, interesting, as you can tell, it's... So they, instead of putting in a fuse, a glass fuse or ceramic fuse, but what they've done is they have put in what looks like... It looks like a resistor, and it says number two on it, but I don't believe that is a two ohm resistor. That's probably a uh, polymeric uh, SMD type self-resetting fuse. So they're utilizing that instead of your typical glass fuse. Now, theoretically, these should reset by themselves um, once the power dissipates. But if it doesn't, then you're going to have a whole heap of fun trying to replace that. So interesting why they've done that um, as opposed to... Just putting in a glass fuse so that two is probably um referring to two amps at least that's my story and i'm sticking to it uh, we have some diode clamping going on here I'll just pull back a little bit yeah it is a very small buzzer uh the piezo here the speaker uh pretty tiny too bad it wasn't larger um we have our gob of glue on the IC, generic IC. Rather messy in terms of uh, component soldering here. It's a real hodgepodge. I'm not liking it at all. Um, all sorts of flux residue. And I mean, what the heck is that? It's a real soldering disaster. Um, oh, wow. Jeez, look at this, folks. Yeah, this is what I mean. When I say cheapo multimeter reviews, I ain't kidding. Look at that. Somebody took a knife or a, God knows what, maybe their teeth, I don't know, and they just hacked away a recess here so the wires can actually feed through the chassis. So instead of having a proper through hole or you know, what other better mechanism an engineer can come up with, they decided on this absolute horrific method. Um, yeah, awesome. I'm not going to take it apart any further. I've pretty well seen everything I need to see. Uh, a real piece of shit, in my opinion. And yeah, so there you have it, folks. Okay, final thoughts on the NAH01. This is a real turd. Has really bad specifications. We're talking a measly 400 microfarad um, a pittance um, in comparison, stark contrast, the uh, the Win Apex, and you can tell I really like this cheap multimeter, but that Win Apex can do at least 47 millifarad, 470 millifarad, I'm sorry, 47 millifarad, that's insane, you know, and it might even go higher, but this adding can't do better than 400 microfarad, so yeah, uh, resistance only 40 ohms, frequency was a total flop, doesn't work, right out of the box. The leads that it ships with, complete, complete crap. Um, the only good thing I would say about it is maybe the form factor. It is small, it is kind of slender. Um, the resistance seems to be pretty well uh, accurate. Um, display, as you can see, when it's up like this, is very hard to see. You know, if it's on an angle, it's not bad. The non-contact voltage, completely um, crap. You saw the input protection, the soldering. I mean, it's it's basically uh, a real cheapo meter piece of junk. So on a scale of one to five stars, you got it. I'm giving the ending H01 a whopping one star. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this review. Plenty more cheapo multimeters and good multimeters and all sorts of electronic goodies coming up. Till the next time, keep on testing.